especially the toy group, the little tiny toys. We have some of the top breed winners in the country there in the group, so it's going to be, I mean, that was just a fascinating, you know, when you're watching dogs that are that strong, the winners all year long, they come head to head, and then the judge has got to only pick one of them. Why, so when a certain breed wins, does that make everyone, like the general public, buy more of that breed after that, that new different breed wins? Oh, uh, yes and no. Uh, it depends on how warm and cuddly the dog is or how it appeals to the sensitivity of, you know, the masses. It's, uh, uh, but uh, it occasionally will. I think we've done a lot to probably accelerate the purchase of uh, French Bulldogs because a lot of people never saw them before. But they're seeing for 19 years on the National Dog Show and, uh, and four years here on this show. They, they just like the dog and they go, oh, that's cute. So, What's your favorite memory from this year's dog show? Uh, let's see. Well, I think the uh, I saw the beef and hound in this show, I think, was one of the best I have ever seen, and I probably would have put my mortgage on the fact that that would have won the group. And they didn't even win the group. Well, that's why you're not a gambler. I'm not a gambler, but yeah, you know, and it's it's, it's funny that I think I can, I, you know, I think I can see through the eyes of a judge now, uh, after all these years. And uh, boy, I, I was absolutely blindsided by his choice. And obviously, he's got his hands on the dog. I don't. So he, he's, you know, and remember, the dogs aren't being, the dogs really aren't competing against each other as much as they're competing against the written standard for their breed as to what they were supposed to be bred for, the form and the function. So the judge has to know that database of all 30 plus dogs in the group to say, okay, this is the best example of this breed. So it's, it's uh, you know, we all look for, oh no, that dog is cute or not. It's, it's not really what it's all about. That's right. Last question. What is your most fond memory of your your current dog or your, your most favorite dog? Oh, the day that I picked out the rescue dog that we have. Uh, and I was opening uh, at, uh, by Purina in uh, St. Louis. I was opening uh, a Humane Society shelter, a very advanced one out there. And I thought that I needed to have a dog in my arms while I was addressing the media. And so I did, and I found this little, small, rust-colored kind of uh, Toto-looking dog. And I held it in my arms as I was talking. And the more I spoke, the more the dog buried its head into my jacket. And it kept bearing, and every time I spoke, the, uh, the audience would go, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. So the time I'm finished, the dog is all the way into my jacket. There are two little legs and a tail sticking out doing uh, this. And I turn to him and I go, does anybody want to come back to Beverly Hills? <laughs> and that's how we have our new rescue. Do you think it's because of your soothing voice? And how old are you when you found out that you had the voice? My voice was the last one to change in high school. Awesome. I was 16 years old before my voice went from this down to what I have right now. It's an awesome voice. You're the best. Thank You're you for coming back. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay.